The cone form is one of the forms that you absolutely have to master. There's seven of them, and they have varying degrees of importance, but the cone is probably one of the most important. You want to be able to do a basic cone. Um, this is a video about variations on the cone. If you have never done this, or if you haven't, um, or if you're having trouble, mostly if you're having trouble, go back and look at some of the videos that I've made that explain more about how to construct this with the wireframe method. That's a good way to, to back up and make sure you have everything perfect if you're having a lot of trouble. But if you're not, and if you just want to play around, go ahead and do this. It comes from the idea that you're taking a triangle and rounding it out. Uh, every cone kind of has an axis. If you want to get things really perfect, you'll put the axis in. If you're not worried about getting it perfect, don't worry about it too much. The cone's applicable to a bunch of stuff, and you're going to be using it over and over again. Um, you know, this is, you know, basically a cup. It's just a cone. You cut the cone off, put a matching arc at the bottom and at the top, and you have a cup. Then when you want your empty cup, you turn it over, and you do the same thing, putting your ellipse at the top and an arc at the bottom, and you're basically done. You know, I mean, cones are really simple, they're really effective, they're absolutely essential to memorize, and they're really easy to play around with. Um, don't forget to play around with line weight, and especially as you go around particular arcs. When you start getting into organic cones and stuff like that, uh, that's when it gets really fun. So this cone is kind of like, I thought it looked like a gnome's hat or something, like a garden gnome, because of the way that it kind of uh, arcs and, and points and looks a little bit silly. Um, and again, my trick for playing around with forms is to more or less play abstractly, and then if it looks like something, um, or reminds me of something, then to go with that, because the the overall shape of a form, or the particular arc that you use on a form, is always going to remind you of, of something or another, and it's going to be more fun to make these associations, and useful, because, you know, if you have to make something up, or you're improvising, uh, drawing out a form, or making up a character, whatever it is that you're that you're attempting to do if you have that shape and form language then you'll be able to pull things out of your head and be more creative and more inventive uh, with it so this one's basically the the wizard hat the gandalf right um, it goes off and arcs uh, with more or less paralleling arcs and then hits back at a point you know and then you throw an ellipse around the bottom and you have a full-on wizard hat um, simple one, pretty easy to do, definitely fun, creates a strong association, and that's all, that's like everything you could want out of doing a form exercise, that this basic form that doesn't really look like anything is reminiscent of something in particular and something specific and recognizable, and it's that sort of shape and form language that you'll want to learn long term and these are the exercises that help you do that this is the building block of how to draw basically anything um, you know if you take a cone you cut it and turn it on its side it becomes kind of like an amphitheater or something like that you could there are concert halls that are basically um, designed on this principle especially outdoor ones because this kind of form projects sound when it's built large um, you can always play around with combining and cutting out forms. There's going to be other videos on that, though. Um, but for now, just work on the the specifics of these forms. Practice it with straight lines, but also practice it with curved lines. When you start getting into mixing curved and straight lines, everything gets much more interesting. You can also play around with um, how steep these cones are. Right, so the first ones that we did, they're very tall and pointy. This one's short and squat, and this one is the kind of cone that you would use 
uh, for wine glasses. You do something in the middle, turn it upside down, and then you get a basic martini glass form. Pretty simple, pretty effective. Then, you know, you have your teepee or your rounded hut, which is basically a cone, and you cut a door out of it. So by doing a simple thing like uh, drawing an ellipse through, then drawing a triangle, then connecting it and making it overlap, you've got something that's easily recognizable and simple to draw. You can always vary it from there and make it more interesting as well by creating support beams and so on. But for the purposes of this exercise, you want to keep it very, very simple, very, very achievable. The other thing too is by keeping all this stuff simple and and having a lot of fun and practicing this sort of thing in the beginning instead of like drawing figures or your favorite comic book character is that you're going to experience success early on. These are relatively simple to do. You, sh you may have trouble at times with this, but you're going to get it. It's not going to take very long. And um, when you start playing around sort of abstractly out of your head like this, um, you're going to be very happy with the results, I think. So come up with your own variations on this. Do all these, but there's many, many more you can do. Get some objects out if you need to for reference and have a good time just playing and drawing and being successful in the early stages.